Hey, Tubies! This is Bob Hickman. It is so good to be back with you guys. Well, uh, I want to say first of all, thank you for, for all of your wonderful support on my last video, which was on the goddess Kali, the Dark Earth Mother. If you haven't seen that, you want to check that out. I think you'll like that. Today's video is about Lord Ganesh. And Lord Ganesh is the horned lord of the Hindus. Uh, you're saying, what? Lord Ganesh, who's this? Well, let me put some pictures up here for you guys. So as you can see, Lord Ganesh, very fascinating, very mystical looking being. He has the head of an elephant and the body of a human. But if you notice, he has tusks, and that's his horns. So he would qualify as the horn lord. Today I'm wearing, in fact, my horn lord shirt because I wanted to, to honor Lord Ganesh. And you can see this uh, is a symbol that represents the solar disk, the sun. And here up here are the horns. So this is a common Wiccan symbol of the horn lord. You guys saw my other shirt on the pentacle, but I also have the horn lord shirt, which I think is really cool. Also, today I'm wearing, in fact, I'll take it off here. This is my Lord Ganesh pendant. Can you guys see that's kind of some glare here? There you go. That's Lord Ganesh, as you can see, sitting there. Um, he's got his crown on. He's holding a lotus flower. Anyways, I, I love Lord Ganesh. And I want to talk to you guys about Lord Ganesh because, um, you know, as we were talking about Goddess Kali, um, you know, some of you said, well, this is really interesting, the Hindu tradition. Um, is it okay for a Wiccan to invoke Hindu gods? How the Hindus feel about that? Well, good thing is I can tell you, I've been doing some research and talking to different Hindus and looking on forums and really... In the Hindu community, they don't really mind that the Wiccans invoke their gods. Um, in fact, they're quite complimented by that. And the other thing the Hindus ask, they say, well, if they use our gods, we hope that they'll be respectful. And I think really that any Wiccan who's sincerely using, um, you know, working with the deities, um, you know, is coming from a sincere place. So that being said, you know, if you are interested in working with the Hindu deities, you know, and you're looking for a lord, you might want to explore Lord Ganesh. Lord Ganesh is a fascinating history. Um, according to the Hindu scriptures, he is the son of Lord Shiva and the goddess Parvati. Parvati is actually another form of the goddess Kali. So our last video we did about Kali, think of Kali's son, and that's Lord Ganesh. And, you know, that actually fits with the Wiccan tradition, because don't we say in the Wiccan tradition that the Lord comes from the lady, that uh, he emanates forth from the goddess? Well, Hinduism teaches that as well. And I find it very fascinating that this Lord who emanates from the goddess happens to have horns, i.e. tusks, but he's the horned Lord. So there are a lot of parallels between the Wiccan myths and the Hindu myths. And when we talk about myths, that doesn't mean that it's a false story. It means it's a spiritual, mystical teaching. So that's what we mean when we say mythology. Uh, mythology doesn't necessarily mean fake. It means a deeper tradition, sometimes an oral tradition or a long-standing tradition. So anyways, Lord Ganesh, though, is actually one of my favorite gods. Um, you know, as I told you guys in my last video, for many years I studied Hinduism, uh, and I attended Hindu temples, so I'm well versed in the Hindu tradition. And I can tell you, I love Lord Ganesh. Um, first time I encountered him, um, I was just drawn to him. You know, I saw his image in a temple, and I was like, who is this? It's like, it just drew me to, towards him. And I thought, how interesting, this man with an elephant head, in some ways, he seems so absurd, it's almost comical. But really, once you encounter Lord Ganesh, it doesn't seem absurd. It makes absolute sense. See, Lord Ganesh is a powerful Lord. He is the Lord of all creation. 
So the animals and the humans and all life is found within Lord Ganesh. So it makes sense that he has a multifaceted form. Now there are stories about how he got his head, which are interesting as well. Um, one story is that Lord Ganesh uh, had a human head, but then his head was decapitated by Lord Shiva. Uh, and then Lord Shiva recreated his head and gave him an elephant head. Uh, there's another story that says Lord Ganesh always existed in this form. And um, when he advented on Earth, he again took this form. So a lot of different stories. But the fact is, Lord Ganesh, as he exists in the form that we see him in, uh, is revered all over the world. You can find Lord Ganesh altars, uh, of course, all over India. But he's also very big in the Buddhist countries of Thailand and Tibet. You'll find him in China, in Nepal, you see, in Vietnam. So Lord Ganesh is kind of seen across many religions. He's known as the Lord who removes obstacles. And so he's a good one to pray to if you're feeling blocked in your life and you want to kind of get things moving. He opens doors. Lord Ganesh also has the other ability of putting blocks in front of people as well for one to prevent them from further harm or to, you know, um, Block, protect somebody. So for example, if you're somebody and you've got somebody who's giving you a lot of problems, you know, they're creating havoc for your life, you could also pray to Lord Ganesh, put a block in front of them so they can't keep bothering you. And he has that ability to do that as well. Um, Lord Ganesh, interestingly, by Hindu tradition, is the first god that is worshipped. It is believed that he opens the doors for communications with the spiritual realm. So if you're trying to kind of get closer to your spiritual life and into that realm of meditation and mysticism, you need to pray to Lord Ganesh. Because I can tell you from personal experience, whenever I've invoked him, my spiritual life has become more profound, more deep, and opportunities for growing and uh, learning have opened. So Lord Ganesh is a favorite for me. Um, anyways. Also, uh, one of the things that you should also know about Lord Ganesh is that he's very liberal. Uh, he accepts worship from anybody. Now, in the Hindu tradition, for those of you who may know some about Hinduism, you may know that some of the gods in the Hindu tradition uh, require specific, specific you know, uh, rituals. They're not always easy to approach. Their worship is not always easily obtained. Um, Lord Ganesh is probably one of the best gods because he really has no real high standards. Uh, you don't have to be a Brahmin and go through certain rituals just to approach his altar. Anybody anywhere can just sit down and pray to him and open up and he will receive that prayer and start working in your life. If you'd like to learn a mantra uh, for Lord Ganesh, I gave you that uh, the other mantra, the, uh, the video I did on the mantra Om Mani Padme Hum, that's a Buddhist mantra, uh, but a, hip, to, um, a Hindu mantra for Ganesh is the following. All right, just listen. Om Ganeshaya Namaha. Okay, so repeat that. Om Ganeshaya Namaha. And if you start chanting that, Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganeshaya Namaha. Om Ganeshaya Namaha. Om Ganeshaya Namaha. You start chanting that mantra every day and meditate, you will connect easily with Lord Ganesh. This mantra, I'm telling you, it is an easy pathway to Ganesh. Um, so, anyways, another name that you might encounter when you research Lord Ganesh is Ganapati. And Ganapati means the Lord of the Ganas. And what that is, is that he's considered the Lord of hosts, meaning all the beings in the spiritual realm are kind of under his leadership. So you could think of it as uh, he's the leader of all the, the beings that uh, work in spirit on behalf of goodness and righteousness. So um, Lord Ganesh uh, is the head of that. So he opens doors in the spiritual realm and in the material realm. If you're somebody who's like, for example, trying to get a job promotion, pray to Lord Ganesh, chant his mantra every day. Um, if you, you know, are looking to start a business, 
definitely, I'm sure the business people in India will tell you, Lord Ganesh is what you need. Uh, so he can open those doors, he can make connections, he can remove obstacles. Um, now, also it's another aspect is there are some people in India who so love Lord Ganesh that they proclaimed him the god of everything. Um, and there is a school or a sect, a branch of Hinduism called the Ganapatiya sect. And the Ganapatiyas say that all of the gods actually emanate forth from Lord Ganesh. So, um, some schools say he's a secondary god, like a demigod. And some schools say he is the major god. Either way, the fact is Lord Ganesh gets things done. And I think that's what makes him very powerful. So anyways, guys, I'm going to leave you here with a few more pictures of Lord Ganesh. Um, I'm building an altar to him as well. I don't have it ready, but uh, I was going to wait and do this video after I have my altar, but I thought, nah, I want to get this going so when I have the altar ready, I can do the video. You guys will be up to speed. So I'm going to let you leave you with just some of those thoughts. I want you to practice that mantra if you're open to it, if you feel like you'd like to work with it. No pressure here, okay? As you know, I always say, you know, take what you want, what you don't, leave the rest behind, and it's all good. But uh, if you're looking for a, to work with the Wiccan tradition and you want to connect our Horn Lord and you feel drawn to the Eastern traditions, Lord Ganesh, I think, will really work for you. So, anyways, let's, uh, let's do some chanting. Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Lessons to you.